Proverbs chapter 6, verse, oh, pick up, 24. And when you think about Proverbs, oh, you know, learn wisdom, great sayings, you know, stuff you find in a fortune cookie. Six, six chapters we're now into, and the Proverbs have been warnings. The word separation People you are not to be associated with. And if you will get that and you will learn that, you'll have many Christians out there with a good walk with God. Family and friends will, will, will destroy a Christian. And a lot of times they don't want to be they don't want to offend anybody, they don't want to hurt anybody, and they don't want to take a stand against the family for Christ. And that's a sin. So we pick up, and I don't know what the number is now, from, from chapter 1 to now, we pick up somebody else that Solomon is going to warn us about. Now, we've just talked about six things and seven abomination of God that God hates. We left off in verse 20. My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thy heart. And tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. When thou wakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment, we're just talking about the parents, what they've been telling their children, what Solomon and his wife have been telling their, their children, Rehoboam. For the commandment is a lamb. And the law is light. I'm, do you recognize that verse from Psalms 119, 105? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light on my path. It is liking to the words of a, of a Solomon who is a father who gets his wisdom from God to the word of God. So if you have a Christian father that's in the word, that studies the word, that the Bible says his wife is to come to him for questions, that father is likened to the word of God. And if he takes the word of God to teach his children, you better adhere to what he said. Because he's saying what God says. Alright. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Colon. It's not a period. It goes on. Now we go to a new subject. From what we just read with the parents commandment to keep thee from an evil woman we've done with evil men we've done with wicked men we've done with forwardness now here's an evil woman that your mom and dad should tell you about should mom and dad tell their children about sex oh uh, they should tell little boy about the wicked woman we see. They should tell their little girl. We, we read the, uh, a couple days ago about the lazy male that has to go to the ant. There are things as a parent you're to teach your children, your male child about certain women, and your female child about certain men to avoid. Paul gives us a commandment as Christians if you're going to marry, only in the Lord. And if your life is miserable, your marriage is ruined because you marry somebody outside the Bible, outside who's a born again Christian, that's your fault because the Bible tells you. Now, if your parents taught you right and you follow this evil woman, that's your fault. Because they should warn you. And if your parents don't warn you, God's going to have them give an account. Let's leave out this evil woman. So, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. I got 1 Kings 11, I think 1. I can't, it's 1 uh, Kings 11. I got Nehemiah 13, 26. The strange woman, the evil woman. Those are outside the land. But well, here's an evil woman. She's, she's wicked. She does wrong. And her mode is flattery. 
the tongue of a strange woman outside the land. She talks like she's not Jewish. I'll tell you what that is today. When you get these white girls who act like they're colored, it is a sin for you to speak against of what your race really is. To act like somebody you're not. When you get a white woman talking, sister, you're talking like a colored woman. What's up, bro? What's happening, dude? That's not talk of a white person. When you hear uh, uh, somebody who's going down the road and you hear rap music coming out of their car, if it's a white person, that is not their music. That is not European music. European music is classical. I'm not even going to talk about American music. It's not who you are. The white man of America does not know his heritage. He doesn't know where he comes from. He thinks he comes from Africa. And he doesn't. And many of you may not like that, but I don't care. She has flattery words and a tongue of a strange woman. You know what Nehemiah had to deal with? He had to deal with a whole bunch of Jews who couldn't speak Hebrew. You're going to raise your children to speak a language that they're not accustomed to. You're going to confuse them. You know, America with this thing, oh, you can speak multilingual and all that. Yeah, you wait till a big office building catches on fire, and the only thing you speak through that PA system is, is English, and how many people will be killed because they don't understand English? Flattery. When she butters you up, listen, every turkey, I don't know when this starts, but just before Thanksgiving, just before November, turkeys are flattered with all kinds of food. They're best food. And they just gobble, 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 and they get fat, 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 and then here comes the farmer with the axe. And they have no idea that their day of end is coming. They just, oh, look at this farmer. This loves me so much. And that is the way of a man that falls for this woman. He just gets buttered up, buttered up, and bound for a fall. Stay away from an evil woman and stay away from a strange woman. Strange woman for a born-again Christian would be a woman that is not saved. Lust not after her beauty in thy heart. Matthew 5.28 and Job 31 verse 9 you go when we st when we study the, the Proverbs 31 the virtuous woman her beauty is vain but a woman that fears the Lord you know that, that beauty will change within years if you fall on a woman just because oh she's hot oh baby look at her she's just one of them what does she look like if she got into a car accident and maybe was not wearing her seatbelt. Would you still love her? You know, all these guys, that they, they, they end up with this woman overnight, and how many drinks you get into her, and then in the morning when you, you perform your duties with her, and you look at her in the morning, and say, ah, who are you? You don't recognize her because she's got, she doesn't have that, the turpentine. She doesn't have the plaster. She doesn't have the, 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 the cosmetics. She doesn't have the lipstick. She doesn't have the eyebrows. She doesn't have all that on. You look at her, oh! And when you got to have a woman put all that junk on, what's she hiding? It says Jezebel painted her face. You know what a husband is to love? He's to love his wife, the way she looks, how she is. I don't care how anybody else. I have been blessed with the wives I've had, and they don't need, listen, they're beautiful to me, and they don't care about that stuff. They don't care about the lipstick. They don't care about that junk. I know a woman, she had a, a, one of those artist suitcases that you open up, and this junks and junks, and it's been 45 minutes putting that junk on. Man. 
don't smile, you may crack your face. And notice it says heart. Jesus said, Who shall look upon a woman to lust after in his heart? So where do you get the little I love you with the heart? You get it out of the Bible. Lust. There's a difference between lust and love. Lust is me, 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 me. Love is what can I do for you? How can I help you? Neither let her take thee with her eyelids. And it's funny because we were all marked today. We're in the, the, the shampoo and we're in the, you know, the toiletry area and all that. And I turned around and it was this little end display. And all these little eyelashes looking at me. Ew, creepy. And that's one of the things that women have is eyelashes that, that they can put on. And when you go to Job chapter six, Job chapter sixteen, verse six, Job speaks about eyeshadow. What are you trying to cover up? Be who you are. And if you are as ugly as a dog, let that man love you because he loves you, not because of what you painted yourself up to be. Every woman is going to end up with wrinkly face unless they get, you know, made in Taiwan. A plastic surgery be natural be who you are a lot, lot better knowing that a man has fallen in love with you because of who you are and what you look like than rather what you painted yourself up to be and when you paint yourself up to be you're not who you are you are being a hypocrite and nobody likes you the Bible says, if you fear the Lord and you do what God says, God loves you. And if God loves you, that's important. All right, number one here, the eye. The eyeball. For by means of a whorish woman, she acts like and looks like if you're not you still can ruin your character now you children are brought up in homeschooling but when Tracy and I grew up there were just certain women in that school man they had a character that was attached to them by who they were and that stayed and if you were to study a whore, for by means of a whore, or rich woman, how she dresses, where she hangs out, how she rebels against God, okay, is brought to a piece of bread. be brought down to poverty you know this day and age we have police that will dress up as a prostitute and will catch you and then your name will be posted in the newspapers maybe even your picture and you know what your life is destroyed by any normal class of people and the adulteress so we got an evil woman. We got a strange woman. Now we got an adulteress. She's one who's married. Will hunt for the precious life. Life is precious. The Bible says. In Acts 16. What must I do to, to get eternal life? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Life is precious. And in the Old Testament, that of what we are in, adultery is punishable by death, and you went to hell there were no sacrifices at all for adultery 
When you committed adultery in the Old Testament under the law, you were condemned. And there was no way to get out of it. Only the sure mercies of God did, did God show David grace. Now we're going to talk about this adulterous affair. Number two, the hand. Can a man take fire in his bosom? Can he grab a fire and draw it up to him? And his clothes not be burned? The answer is no. You cannot grab fire and put it up to your shirt and it's not going to catch on fire. Unless you should have wearing asbestos, but that's not that was not around back then. So if you're going to go to an adulterous affair with a woman, you better just grab fire and try not to burn your clothes. And notice how fire is used. Number three, the feet. We go on eyes, hand, and feet. Can one go upon hot coals and his feet not be burned? You say, well, I know a bunch of people over in other countries that, you know, they're called firewalkers. And I'll tell you one thing, they're satanic. Ask them if they feel the burn. I guarantee they feel something. Unless they have deformed their body in such a way that they don't. And I guarantee they don't just take a measly little walk across those hot coals. Psalms 140 verse 9. And you know what you get from 27 and 28? As far as the adulterous woman, you play with fire, you're going to get burnt. And that's where that expression comes from. And the answer for a normal person in 28 is no. You walk on hot coals, your feet are going to get burnt. Okay. So, he that goeth into his neighbor's wife, go back to the adulterous woman, whosoever, oh, look at that whosoever, whosoever but believe in the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved, whosoever not found written in that land's book of life was cast in the lake of fire, whosoever toucheth her, 1 Corinthians 7, 1 and 8. Paul says, you better not even touch. You ain't got a wedding ring. Wedding ring. You ought not be touching. Touches her. Doesn't say get her in the back seat of the car. Doesn't say anything about the marriage bed. It says, touches her. So what do you go when you see these nice stores? They got this nice stuff like that. When you see signs over the place, what does it say? Don't touch. Do not touch. Hands off. That's all Bible. Shall not be innocent. You better watch out for the look. You better watch out for your hands. You better watch out for your feet. And you better watch out touching. If you've gone to touching, you've gone too far. You ought to know better if you know she's, she's someone else's uh, wife. Now, we go into something weird here. Verse 30. We jump into another class of person. Men do not despise a thief. If he steals to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. Chapter 30, verse 7. There, there are a thief out there. Listen, he, he's got to steal to survive. And some people will acknowledge, oh, I know, but you didn't have to steal. I know why you did, but you didn't have. It wasn't for drugs. It wasn't for the entertainment. It wasn't for the troublemakers of Proverbs 1. It's, I got to have something to eat. But, if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold 
he shall give all the substance of his house. Now the motive was hunger. Crime does not pay. Now, if he's got to steal just to satisfy his hunger, he's, he doesn't have anything in his house. He's going to have to sell himself to servitude. But it's understand that if proper he had stolen just to feed his soul, that is, that is the motive. Some may be like, let's, you come under my wing, you work for me to pay off your debt, and I'll take care of you. I'll give you some skills, I'll give you something, so when you're done paying off my debt, you can go somewhere and earn a, a whatever. The Jews under the law were to help each other. Okay? That between 30 and 31 the motive is hunger and if somebody broke into your house and they were truly hungry I mean they don't own a brand new car and they're truly homeless may have a part-time job that they're not making you probably feel for the guy and maybe you give him something extra say here I don't know that's between you and the Lord but you would feel, if it's an honest case of a motive for hunger, you, you would feel something for the person. But, jump right back. But whosoever commits adultery, a thief for the motive of food, you would feel sorry for him. But now we're going back to the adulterous relationship with a woman lacketh understanding. You don't know what the law said. You have no relationship of knowledge and wisdom, understanding to God. The knowledge is you know you're not to commit adultery. Wisdom would be get away from that woman. And the understanding is I'm going to please God. No, you didn't do that. He that doeth it destroys his own soul. The motive here is lust. Not that I'm hungry. Not that, that this is the only woman in the world. It's lust. First Corinthians six sixteen. Destroyeth his own soul. He's damned. Rehoboam. Yes, Dad? You mess with another man's wife. Your soul is damned for all eternity. Any man that messes with any, any man's wife under the law, soul is destroyed. How many people want to go back and live under the law? I don't. I have just enough gas to go to the land, never mind Jerusalem, three times a year. If I was under the law. A wound and who would say that if God would strike you with a disease? You know, I know a few stories about Christian men who has stepped out on their wives. I heard a story one time of a Christian man, his wife is in the hospital giving birth. While he's out with a woman that he is not supposed to be with, and he got a little accident, and certain part of his body will be incapa incapable of ever being used again. That's a wound. Maybe God will give you a little disease explained to if you're married or ever get married. Well, why do you got that disease? Oh. Dishonor. Now, that is not in America today. Adultery is just out on the TV screens. It is out in the public. It's even in the church houses. 
There is no shame in adultery today. There is no shame in the sodomite marriages, as the Supreme Court ruled today. It is not a sin. But if you were to commit adultery according to the Bible, you were to be dishonored. You would be looking up. That guy cheated. That woman cheated. When, when they brought that woman caught in adultery in John chapter 8 before Jesus, that wasn't to be, hey, all right, let's, let's have her speak at the convention. Let's have her help our house for dinner. It was, it was supposed to be a shame for that woman. And the very fact, last thing is mentioned about Jesus is don't go and sin no more. shall he get and his reproach shall not be wiped away it's a social sin that goes to the grave and when the people in Israel were to find out and they have witnesses the adulteress and the adulterer would be stoned to death It would be looking around the corner and saying, does anybody know? Every time you see her husband, does he know? Every time you see a policeman, is he here for me? That's not America today. All right, now we go to another person. For jealousy is the rage of man. This would be the husband of the woman. He's been cheated on. He's had a part of him stolen. He's been violated. People will be talking about him and his wife. A wound, uh, no, for jealousy is the rage of man, therefore he will not spare in the day of vengeance. Numbers 25. Now it's interesting. Because if they were caught, again, they were to be brought before the trial, they would be, there would be a trial, if they would be found guilty, A loving husband would not stand up and say, oh, let him go. It's okay. No. The Bible says that if your wife commits adultery, or you're, you are to love your wife enough that if you've been violated, there is going to be, you, you don't receive no payment at all. As a matter of fact, that in numbers, there's a law that if you even think your wife has cheated on you, it's called the spirit of jealousy. Just to get things right, you bring her to the temple. And everything's okay. You both walk away. I'm sorry. I just had the spirit of jealousy. I just love you so much, and you're just beautiful to me. And uh, But if there was, she'd be left in the temple starting to rot. Call loving your wife. He will not regard any ransom. First John one nine. How about that? He won't forgive you. And even the Bible says that two or three witnesses. Let's say that, let's say that there's only one witness. You you can't prosecute them for one witness. And say they are let go by the law. A proper husband will hate that guy for the rest of his life. Oh, I got all this sheep. Let me give you. No. I'll throw in all. The, no. 
You step on my property one more time, I'm going to kill you. Now get off my property and get out. I don't even trust you being around my house. How many husbands would, would feel that way? Because that love has been destroyed. He will not regard any ransom, neither will he rest content. He's not going to be satisfied. Though thou givest many gifts. You're not going to appease him. Those are some vast words from Solomon. And this Solomon is speaking. The fact is that for whatever reason, it, it has not been it, it has not been tried or tried and, and found not guilty. You have got an enemy. And brother, I will not want to go in combat and be standing in front of this guy. Because you're going to have one of those million dollar wounds in the rear end. And you know what's going to be said if you're found dead on the ground with a hole in your rear end? <laughs> he turned around and ran. <laughs> That's not the case. The guy, the guy killed him. And old Joe, he went into combat and all that. He got the million dollar wound. And died from it. <laughs> and, the, and the guy who, who's been cheated, <laughs> I'm not going to say nothing, but that's not the case. <laughs> you are warned tonight about the evil woman. Who will use flattery of a strange woman. She won't act who she is. And she's wicked. She has nothing to do with God. And you ought not have nothing to do with her. And then you are talked about an adulterous woman who steps out on her husband. And you are been in violation. It'd be better for you to walk into someone's house and steal their food. To feed your stomach. And have them come walking through the door there. Ah! What are you doing? Uh, I'm just hungry and it, I'm sorry. Here's my here's my credentials. I'm just starving. Oh, honey, let, let me make him some more soup or something like. Yeah, go ahead. And you know, buddy, you broke into my house and what do I do? I want to forgive you. You're really in trouble. I want to forgive you. You stole my wife. Get out of here. I don't want your presence. I don't want nothing. I want you dead. See the difference? You've got two crimes. One crime is because I, I have a physical need that has not been met. And I have a, 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 a lustful social disease called lust one guy would be forgiven one guy could be asked to work in the fields work is not a sin God gave Adam work before the fall and that guy would be working for somebody if that's the case from stealing from somebody say you know what okay at least I'm getting money I am paying my debts and you know I'm doing what God wants me to do work I may not have had a job before but now I got work I'm being taken care of now here's a guy outside of America take America out of the picture but in a normal common place of country somewhere that has some dignity and has some good relationship has some good sense when a guy goes into into the work that can't trust him you couldn't trust him with that guy's wife mr. doe uh, you want to give us the the, the chest for the uh, uh,
call that money there. The pocket money? Can't trust you with money no more. Uh, these clients here are no more under your control. We can't trust you. Uh, we give them to somebody else. Matter of fact, we don't even want you in this place of employment because if you can do that to, to another man like what you did, we don't want you to do it to a bunch of men that are working here. You can just leave. It's called distrust. And it says, a wound in dishonor. You know, when you wear the badge of an adulterer, that was supposed to be a badge of uh, lowness, sinner, wickedness. Well, how wonderful today under grace that you can do something like that and Jesus Christ will forgive you. But don't go and do it no more. Under grace, God will wash away your sins of however wickedness you've done. You can be a sodomite and be saved. Just don't go back to it. But people who know you are still going to say, hey, there's an adulterer. No, wait a minute. I'm saved. I'm a born again Christian. I don't care what you are. I know what you did. And I have advisement to you. Don't go back and try to witness to that woman's husband. You have no business being there. Well, I want to make things right. You write it in paper. He doesn't trust you. He doesn't want to have anything to do with you. Put it down in paper and mail it to him. But by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, we can be cleansed. But don't go out and say, well, I'm going to go do it because, you know, Christ will forgive me. No. Solomon has told us separation. And just, just jump to seven real quick. My son, keep my words and lay up. We go right back to what the parents say. The first seven chapters so far is what a parent has told their children. I've told certain things about certain women that I probably can't say right now that my father taught me. But it is a parent's job to teach their children what is right and what is wrong because they don't know. And if you keep the commandments, if you keep the law of your mother and father, and when you come up to this situation with this evil woman, or with this strange woman, or with this adulterous woman, it should be bringing to your heart, if you love God, Dad told me to keep away from Mom told me about women like this. And that is not being taught in America today. I can tell you one thing that my dad told me. Certain women. I was never to come home again. If I got involved. Those are harsh words. And mark my children. If they married the wrong person. Bye. You better not come to me with a woman that's not saved or parading a man that's not saved. You're already going to, I don't, don't need to tell you. The Bible already tells you. That's the way. That's what the Bible says. It's black and white. We are to avoid certain situations, including sexual. You know, in Proverbs chapter 5, chapter 6, 23 to 35, chapter 7, chapter 9, 13 to 18, and chapter 22, 14 are sexual sins found in Proverbs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 in the Bible is number of death.
Very important. Very important words.